On this week's show, we interview the three finalists running for school president. Our correspondent Chisholm has an in-depth report from this year's admission statistics, and Elville in India, a feature from one of the international trips this spring break. Lawrenceville's 10-minute newscast begins now. From our studios inside the Lawrenceville School's historic Pop Hall, this is L10 with Guy L. Fobes. Hello and welcome back from vacation. We have a big show in store and we will begin with our individual interviews of the three presidential candidates. They are James Stevenson, Naya Bashir, and Eric Heisen. Why do you, James Stevenson, want to be our next school president? I think I've had a lot of uh, experiences uh, at Lawrenceville. I've tried to branch out as best as I can. I mean, uh, house president, participating in and there's many clubs which have varied from Pokemon Club, uh, Flash Mob at one point, uh, to uh, Lawrence, which has definitely been a big part of my life and my experience here at Lawrence. Well, I think I uh, can incorporate what I've learned in those uh, experiences uh, you know, into uh, changes that um, I'll make at Lawrenceville. And I think that a large part of being a uh, student body president is reflecting uh, all those realms of Lawrenceville life, and I think I can do that. Well, I think as much as everyone likes to say Lawrenceville's perfect and amazing place, which it is, I think I love Lawrenceville. Everyone that goes here, I think, pretty much loves Lawrenceville. I see there are ways we can make it an even better place, and I think I have ideas I can directly make Lawrenceville a better place and sort of get over these things that have been issues in the past and be able to advance as a community. What do you see in yourself that separates you from James and Eric? Uh, what sets you apart? Despite that I'm a girl, I, w I think that's a big one <laughs> on top of it, girl power. Um, but I think that I have a vision. Um, I'm not, I have a vision for the school, um, for everyone to feel that they're giving their entire passion to our community. And I'm really dedicated to making that happen. Um, and I'm super excited. I would be super excited to take that challenge on. I think my experience uh, as house president has helped me realize that if you want to like pursue a project, you want to pursue a big event, um, you really have to uh, hold yourself accountable for each step. So I think that that experience um, in organizing different events, realizing what it takes for to get people to come to events, uh, to get energized, to get enthusiastic, I think I know uh, what it takes and I think I can definitely definitely use that when it comes to being president. In your interview with the Lawrence last week, you said, quote, school spirit on a whole is an issue, and a big part of changing the spirit of the school is making sure that the members of the community are connected to one another. You said this in response to what you thought the biggest issue was. Yeah. How do you plan on raising school spirit? I think a lot of that is feedback. Making sure that the student council understands the pulse of the entire school community. So what are we actually interested in? Um, student council before, have sent, they've sent out tons of survey monkey, monkeys about what we want to do. And I think that we could do that. We could send out survey monkeys, hey, what do you want to do this weekend? Give options, um, an other tab, you know, take from that. Pull from what the students actually want to do. Um, and beyond that, maybe even having focus groups. So maybe you hold a casino night and you go and you say, hey, freshman girls, like the student council's coming. Uh, we're bringing cookies to your common room at eight. Come down and talk to us. And then we'll say, hey, did anybody even go to the casino night? Um, what would you like to do instead? You know, you just have to make sure that you understand what the students want. And me and the student council will be in the library for about an hour, hour and a half, maybe two hours, um, once a week, sort of having conversations that could be lighthearted conversations, just sort of getting to know people. It could also be very serious conversations about feedback about what's going on in the community. And I think that way I could really, we, the student council and I could really staff it, um, tap into the community and figure out what they really want and what and their feedback on events and not just us estimating what they want and thinking what they want, but actually having these conversations and seeing what the student body wants and what they want to have, want to have less of and want to have more of. And I think this way there will be a very transparent and clear relationship between the student body and the student council. What other initiatives do you see aside from just decision making and student voices? What other things do you want to branch out in in your campaign? Right, so I mean the two I guess central ideas to my platform are uh, reinvigorating, I guess, the spirit and energy of Lawrenceville, and then, as we talked about before, uh, making making those policy changes and getting feedback from uh, the student body. So I think that first component is c 
compl it's invaluable. It's critical. Um, you know, from school meeting, minute, minute to win it, um, to events uh, like social events. Uh, those those things are extremely important to my platform. And I think having events with I don't know Rita's, uh, having barbecues, having uh, you know a greater variety in events will definitely get people uh, energetic, excited, and that's the whole purpose. We want to make the Lawrenceville experience as, as fun as possible. What part of Lawrenceville do you feel most connected to? What do you think is your favorite aspect of this school? <laughs> it's really hard to choose because I, I love so much about Lawrenceville in all honesty. Like, uh, I'm, invo I, uh, I'm involved in the jazz band, I'm involved in SDC, and uh, I'm, on, I'm part of the wrestling and lacrosse programs here, and I love being a part of all those things and really being connected in each one of those things. And I think, to, I don't mean to avoid the question, but I think what I enjoy most is from different days or different weeks being able to really tap into one and be really connected in one, one week. Maybe one week I'm really all about the wrestling team and we have a really big tournament. The next week I'm preparing for a concert with the jazz band and then maybe it's rehearsals, at like concert rehearsals for SDC or Black Box or something like that. So I, I like the constant balance that it's not just I, I don't find myself focusing on just one thing, but being able to bounce back between a, a bunch of other things. That's what I like. That's what I enjoy about Lawrenceville. I think my favorite part of Lawrenceville is that you can develop as a person. I know that's really like poster board, but it's true. You come here and you recognize in yourself the different sides to you. Um, so for example, theater wasn't something that I could pursue at my old school. But coming here, I realized that that's a big part of who I am, um, and it's something that I've been able to connect with a lot. But you also get to dabble in everything else. Like I've written for the Lawrence, um, I've helped out with the, with I don't know anything. You know, you, you just have friends that are interested in something, and their passion leaks onto you, and then you just like, yeah, I helped out with that. And then you go home and you're telling your mom and your dad all the stuff that you're doing, and it's just like, yeah, wow, I do do a lot, um, and I am interested in a lot, and. That's something that Lawrenceville cultivates, and I would say every person. We'd like to thank all three of them for taking part. And as a reminder, this Thursday during school meeting, the three candidates will deliver their platforms in front of the student body, and voting will follow on Friday. The results will be brought to you by the Lawrence. Over spring break, Lawrenceville students and faculty travel to Bolivia, Ireland, Austria, and Germany. We have a chance to bring you the special feature from this year's trip to India. Our trip centered around two locations, Delhi, one of the five largest cities in the world, and Benares, the holiest city in India. Delhi introduced us to the brute force of the nation, a world totally unlike our own. We Westerners watched in amazement as seemingly unconventional lifestyles found a way to coexist. In Benares, religion, tradition, and culture were closer than ever before. Spending our nights at homestays and our days on the ghats of the Ganges, the initial barrier between India and America diminished substantially. Our adventure was indescribable. Not only was the trip an extension of our studies, but India pushed the boundaries of our minds, leading us to question the very foundations of our lives at home in a collective effort to understand the outside world. Traveling throughout the country included an epic 18-hour train ride. Here's my sleeping situation for tonight. my family 445 um, in order to go on a boat ride along the Ganges at 530. Um, so it was during uh, sunrise so the whole place was a mix of blues and oranges and it was just I can't explain why but it was just fascinating it was amazing you just overwhelmed with the sense of awe and 
spiritualness. Um, and then we went out for chai afterwards uh, and breakfast. Uh, we came back to the house and we pretty much sat outside. Um, we had a guest speaker come in. Um, he was really interesting and just talked about Varnasi's history. Uh, then we had a home cooked meal outside and we just visited the ashram that we are going to be working with uh, later this trip. So it's been a good day. With our final revisit day tomorrow, we have Chisholm outside of admissions where she will give us an in-depth report on the statistics of the incoming students. Chisholm? Thanks, Gail. I'm here outside the admissions office and we got a chance to speak to Dean Shepard about the Lawrenceville admission process. What do you, does the Lawrenceville admissions department look for in a Laurentian? Oh, that's an interesting question. In fact, the word Laurentian is kind of at the heart of everything we do. Uh, we look for kids who can fulfill Lawrenceville's mission. They're talented, they're hardworking, they're diverse, uh, they're interesting people. And the exact definition of what goes into that is the point of many of our conversations in the admission office uh, committees. And that's a great part about this is it's kind of like a, it's a tossed salad. We put all these pieces together and try to make it work so that we have a great student body for everybody. So what was the hardest part of admissions this year? The hardest part is making choices. You know, we're really lucky. We have over 2,000 applicants for 250 places. And so that makes some pretty tough decisions. But at the end of the day, we try to consider all points of view and the needs of the school. And most importantly, the kids who are the most qualified. This year's admitted students pool includes students from a wide variety of countries, including Australia, Nigeria, and Israel. Standouts from this year's admitted class include a four-time class president, a nationally ranked chess player in the Caribbean, and a student who got a perfect score on her SSAT. Back to you, Gael. Thank you, Chisholm. That is our show for Tuesday, April 7th, 2015. Thank you so much for joining us as we start the spring term. Good night. This needs to be deleted now. Fine. Mr. Dom, can you not put this on the video? <laughs>